where we can actually control reality is by thinking about it. But it has to be something of a positive nature. We have uh, carcass and science technology where, if you consider it, like a Sarasota Memorial Hospital here, and they check you in, they have a palm reader. That's a biometric. Well, if we can have biometrics, we have an aura field around the human body. Some people can see, actually see different colors, you know. And uh, why can't we control the driver car by putting a camera in? And we're going to still drive car down, which is the science of intention. Intention is an energy. still doesn't explain away why it happened the next day. You're intentional. You know, may have yeah. been just enough to push it over many times before failure. So, uh, there's all sorts of subtle energies in the universe that are now becoming expressed by people who are outside the normalcy bias. They're not ashamed. The awakening is really a remembering. A re-remembering. Re yes, because we've done this before. When we have paradigm shifts, all that essentially survives is love and life. And that's all we are. One of, one of my big questions of you guys was what your thoughts were on the creation of the Sphinx that we referred to earlier, the pyramids, the Mayan temples all that technology, all that architecture that was bypassed for many centuries and not able to be recreated or accomplished again. It's pre-Diluvian architecture. Pre-Diluvian. I'm not familiar with Which means? Answer. Flood. Okay. And then afterwards, it was reconstructed. The Sphinx didn't have the head that it had on it. Correct. No. Correct. And then the pyramids <coughs> are... Uh, well, getting back to the Sphinx, you can also see, like what you were saying, the water lines when it was flooded yeah, yeah, as it yeah, was receding. Yeah, that, that's how they, they, they proved it was a pre-Diluvian structure. Yeah, I heard that too. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and then the pyramids themselves, I can't remember, uh, it has to do with, uh, uh, there's uh, Russian pyramids in uh, New China. Huh? There's hundreds of them in China. There's underwater pyramids. Yeah, but aren't they two different architecture, a Nubian and a, a Russian? That I'm not sure. I don't know. I can't remember. But uh, it amplifies, uh, oh, it's not gamma rays. What is it? I can't recall it. But I, I know what you're talking about. Um, and that's that's the importance of the having the capstone actually yeah, on. Yeah, yeah on the pyramid. Yeah. I think of the album cover on Dark Side of the Moon. Right? Oh, yeah. The light yeah. The light. The yeah. light. It's funny you mentioned that. And the funny album covers have, have secrets. Secrets that we're just not waking up to. And the lyrics? I wait. So you guys are... Hang on. Let me... So... I want to welcome everybody for joining us right now. Uh, as you know, I'm Greg from N5D.com and we're joined by Randall Sanders and John Barron. Uh, we're here on the beach at Siesta Key and doing a little spirit talk. So if you have any questions, jump right in. And uh, yeah, we're talking about the pyramids now and the Sphinx and where they came from and how they got here. But we were talking about deja vu and all well, sorts the of things. Record is, for me, I mean, I had the same understanding you were making. About jo uh, Edgar Casey and, and... There was a recording. Right. You know, like we talk about the book of life, that everything is recorded. But I think it goes beyond that, even at the quantum level, that a lot of hyperdimensional physics and uh, what's been discussed about uh, med beds, that these technologies exist, but the Akashic Records, I can't remember the exact uh, scientific name, that is a hyperdimensional phenomenon that even down to the DNA level, and even beyond that, the quantum level, everything is recorded as an entity moves through space-time. And like uh, the guys are coming out 
who have experienced this and witnessed this, and they're being dissed because they're whistleblowers. And the only way they get around with it is they go totally public, so they can't be dissed. So uh, they have arms and legs and limbs totally missing. They put them inside these med beds, and it's a three or four day process, along with uh, some sort of uh, neurochemical treatment, and the limb actually regrows. And then they come out of the med bed with the power when you want. And uh, a lot of people refer to that movie, if you've ever seen it, as uh, Tom Cruise Elysium. There's a demonstration of med beds in that movie. Huh. I haven't seen that. I'll have to check that out. There's people that, uh, who have been inside of the whistleblowers who have uh, actually experienced it. And, uh, I know we talk about Corey Good, Tony in Black. He's being dissed now. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. I can't keep up. It's all entertainment to me. Yeah. But, uh, but it, it's, to me, it's a very helpful thing that we do have technology. Yes. That, have not, that could revolutionize the human experience and free us all. You know, it's 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 like it's like have when people are asking for donations to the American Cancer Society. Cancer, it's that's so ridiculous because cancer's been cured. I don't know how many times by so many different ways and methods, but yet we're still donating to something that's a hundred and sixty-three billion dollar a year cause. Crazy. And it, and it's uh, interesting because before Greg turned uh, Facebook Live on, uh, I had asked a question or asked these guys if they were familiar with Lilydale, which is up in the Lake Chautauqua, New yes. York, where it was like a community of, of seers, and many of them refer to themselves as readers. But your description of the fact that everything in history has been written down, and perhaps everything forward is being written, has been written down, makes sense that he was reading me as what my future was or things yeah, he was tapping that, into that realm it makes perfect sense that yeah that's what it was yeah and basically right now what we're doing is just re-remembering what's going on it's not remembering but re-remembering as time really doesn't exist and you may want to mention what your description of it when i asked about deja vu and where it came from and why we have it um, you both had excellent responses so perhaps you could mention that to folks yeah um basically when in my own personal experience, uh, what a deja vu would be, would be, is if, say for example, uh, there's a parallel world that's going on right now and you're just getting a glimpse of it. Everything is basically the same in that parallel world or reality, except for something very minute and you've already seen that. Also, the other um, idea that goes along with that is that time doesn't really exist. Um, so you're just seeing things from a, a perspective in time maybe a slightly beforehand, uh, a few seconds beforehand. Uh, Randall, what was your idea? Well, I think, I think you're exactly right. I mean, you just brought me another point. I think we're all capable of doing consciousness shifts. And the consciousness shift is the same thing as the hyperdimensional shift. You drop out of this space-time fabric, maybe by one thread, and you have a deja vu. Or you see a vision. And, and uh, you know, traditional scripture, without a vision, the people perish. Well, that not only applies, I think, to the vast population of people, but it applies to your day-to-day -day life, just in seeking out meaning and purpose during the human experience. I think that's why the human experience exists, is to each of us find the real purpose and meaning for us to be. If it's not service to humanity, I don't know what's beyond that. But once you wake up to that, then it's a remembering that our highest evolution is to realize that I am another you. What's the, the term? In la catch a la keen. I can never say that. Thank yep. You. I'm always going to call Greg when I need that pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's so true. In la catch a la keen. I am, I am another you. Uh, have you ever heard of that before? It's a Mayan expression. No, yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I just put a video out on N5D um, YouTube, I don't know, maybe a week ago or a week and a half ago, about Inla Kachalakin, did a whole thing on that. Maybe I'll post the, uh, the link to it right here when I get back home. So. Well, I think like there's a movement going on right now, and I may be wrong, that people are waking up to uh, the individual sovereignty. I'm not talking about from 
cube, a little bit long cube, but a cosmic. It has to expand this cosmic sovereignty and cosmic volition. That uh, you are an eternal entity, being, and when we come into the human experience, we acquire separation. Like when a child is born, the first thing they recognize... The veil. Yeah, the, ba the veil is yeah. lifted. There's mother, and the, I'm separate from mother. So that's the beginning of separation. And throughout life, this separation becomes fragments of an infinite amount of, of duality, which can be leveraged against us. But once we begin to see the commonality or the oneness that I'm big on, then once you experience that oneness, it's far, far more than non-dualistic thinking. Far, far more. Because we identify with each and every thing around us, doesn't matter what it is, as coming from a single source, a divine creator, God, or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Nomenclature doesn't matter. It's the experience in the sense of that energy that pervades the universe. But if you're separated from that, then you're lost. I had a, uh, I had a dream a couple years ago that I was about to incarnate and uh, I'm looking around and everybody's walking around like zombies and I, I, I had no idea why they were doing that and I thought okay well something's up here why, why, are, why do they have their memories erased why do I still have mine and I was about to incarnate what they do is through symbolism, I was put on an elevator, and I'm going down the elevator, and they're asking me questions, uh, simple things that I should know, and I, I'm thinking, okay, they're trying to trick me, and I'm going to act up. Yes, you were the lingerie department. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> but uh, and they're trying good. to trick me, and I eventually, you know, we're just about to the bottom floor. And they asked me something, and I, I screwed up, and I answered the wrong question. They brought me back up, and they, they yeah, they they erased my, they tried to erase my memory, but that's why I think I came in with a knowing on certain things. And a lot of you I, that are watching right now probably came in with a knowing of certain things, yes. and you may have gone through a, a similar experience. The indigo children, that, that's a common, common trait of indigo, I think. A knowing. Yeah, a knowing. Yeah. yeah. So my knowing was with uh, religion. Um, I just knew that there was something wrong about it, and even as a child, I would get go into a church and I'd get like the eebie-jeebies whenever I'd go in there. there. I just knew that there was something off with it, and uh, you know, from that day forward, you know, I've always pursued you know the real meaning behind religion, which actually boils down to subservience, control, and conformity. It's the same template as every government, and how's that working so far for most people here? But. Uh, it's, it's a knowing, and I know that a lot of you guys that are watching right now have that kind of knowing about something, and it might not be religion, but I'm sure you can relate to it. I fit softly there. Yeah, There's I know. There's still a lot of mysteries that need to be revealed, I think. That's true. That's true. So. My eighth grade teacher once said, and it stuck with me my entire life, was religion was invented to answer the questions man could not answer. Hmm. Well, I think, I think religion, at, religion at its best is spirituality kindergarten. <laughs> I agree. I think that's... And, yeah. We've yeah. all been there. I don't disrespect it. I can still hang out and have a great time with any denomination. Yeah. But then there comes a point of transcendence, even in the experience. Mm -hmm. and I think there's a lot of uh, varieties of religious experience. He wrote that book, Houston Smith. Not sure. I can't remember. That, uh, he went around and surveyed these multicultural experiences of the religious experience. It's not to be invalidated, but it is to be graduated from. Yeah. Well, the thing I find most fascinating about religion is the story of astrotheology that's told through it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's yeah. written in perfect astrotheological order, where it begins with uh, the, the golden calf which is to introduce the age of Taurus, and then it goes, actually it's reverse astrotheology, um, but it, then it goes into the, the blowing of the ram's horn, which is the age of Aries, and then when Jesus fed the masses with two fish, that was to introduce the um, age of Aquarius, which we're That's going amazing. in right now. Um, it's, it's beautiful, um, it tells a lot of great parables, and has great metaphors, and what Jesus said 
you know, you can do all I can do and more is something similar I was talking to my ex-wife about earlier, right after I did the um, beach video earlier today about being able to turn on all the codons in our DNA. Our DNA only has, I believe, 20 of the 64 codons that are turned on. And if somebody can figure out how to turn on all 64 codons, they can do anything. And I was talking to my daughter's mother about that earlier today. So, you know, this is what we're working on is, you know, myself personally at least, is, is to get my DNA fully activated. Well, I think the point is of structured belief system, structured government, if it's a control institution, institutional control, uh, maybe it's education, public education, all these things keep us from discovering who we really are. And uh, beyond that is that if we get into astrotheology and now yes. uh, exopolitics, yes. uh, it's not so much how exopolitics influence beyond the horizontal realm of the human experience. It helps us integrate into the, the greater cosmos, the entire universe, of which we are inside. I mean, the atoms, the, uh, the carbon-based atoms, every chemical process is replicated, especially in plasma science, by the whole universe inside the human body. Have you seen that picture of the neurons in the brain? It re resembles exa the exact uh, well, picture made. of... Well, it's, it resembles the, the, exact, the exact picture of the universe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, definitely. But you know, one thing I'd like to know the answer to is every time I stand in front of a microwave, I feel it in my body. I swear. I feel like I'm inside that microwave oh, and every yeah. cell is vibrating. It's unreal. So yeah. There you, you, you tap in so in. Yeah. Yeah. Some people feel that around cell phone power. I feel those vibrations from coming from that microwave. I got to be at least 20 feet away from it, or else it's. it's, it's I, I I totally get it, John. Um, the thing thing that I have an issue with is laptops. And my buddy <laughs> Randall is uh, you know he's the computer genius. He helped me a lot on my computers here recently. But if I have a laptop sitting on my lap, I can actually feel the burning right above my kneecap. So it's on the outer edge of the laptop and I can feel some kind of burning going on with that laptop. So there's some kind of horrible energy that is coming from that. The GPU needs to be re -thermed. Well, no, it happens with every laptop I've had. Every one of them. I feel this dull pain in my in my knee, right above my knee, on both knees. So. How about go? All right, Randall, Randall's out of here. All righty, so we're gonna sign off on that. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, Randall Sanders, John Barron, and myself here on the beach, Siesta Key. Yeah. A little spirit chat going on. So sending you all infinite love and light. This is Greg from Infidee and Zentasia.com. Peace. One of the peace. <laughs>